let us sing to the Lord, for he has gloriously triumphed. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when, by your gift, we have known it more fully, so that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go up and join with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. As a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then a eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself? or someone else. Then Philip opened his mouth and began with this scripture passage. He proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, there is water. What is to prevent me being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Paul came to Azotus and went about proclaiming the good, the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. 
Bless our God, you peoples. Loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God who refused me not my prayer or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him. We've been hearing from the great Eucharistic discourse in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, for a few days. And while it is named that, the Eucharistic discourse, there is a second theme of that discourse, and that is faith. Our Lord yesterday in the gospel said that although you see me, you do not believe. And our Lord is quick to point out that seeing wonders, even signs, does not guarantee belief. We put a great premium on being able to see in order to believe. Our Lord does not. And In fact, you can almost hear a bit of humor in his voice when he addresses Thomas and says, do you believe me because you have seen me, Thomas? Blessed are those who have not seen but believe. And we might hear that and say that the point of the story is simply that those of us who have not seen the Lord and yet believe are blessed, and that is true. But the deeper significance is that Thomas has only seen the outside, but it is only an interior light of faith, a gift bestowed by the Father that brings about belief. It is not based upon earthly seeing. Many people saw our Lord, including including the crowds that he was speaking to in today's gospel, And yet they left him that day. Many left him that day. They saw him and yet did not believe. Well, so then our Lord came down to earth, died and rose from the dead so that we might believe in him, all the while knowing that this was something that was a gift given by his Father to each 
who he would call his own. And as we heard yesterday, the will of the Father is that he should not lose one of those whom he, the Father has given him. That's you, and that's me. Well, since we have been given this light of faith, and do have the faith even to come to Mass, to come to Mass not on a Sunday even, in order to receive his body and blood in the Eucharist. Nevertheless, we are not off the hook as far as a deepening of our faith. Just as our Lord risked so many people leaving him so that he might teach them about the Holy Eucharist, so too he risks making his body and blood available to all of us. He risks us taking that for granted. And one of my favorite quotes from J.K. Chesterton is that anything worth doing is worth doing badly, in fact. He compares it, everyone says anything worth doing is worth doing well. Well, he says actually anything truly worth doing is worth doing badly. Our Lord knows that his body and blood is the pledge for eternal life, that which will give salvation to the world. And he realizes that not all will come to his body and blood with the faith that recognizes just how truly special that gift is. But he thinks it's worth it still for the sake of that one soul who will receive his body and blood full of faith and unction. And so anything worth doing really is worth doing badly, if it truly is worth doing. And so our Lord risks all of that taking for granted in order that one soul may receive him with a full heart and with total love. And he also risks all of those mornings in which we come not feeling particularly moved by his Eucharist, by his body and blood, and we receive it dryly. But even that will bear fruit in the end. By the time we are enlightened by him with a deeper sense of faith, and we shall remember all of the times in which we have received his body and blood, and it will all come flooding in, then it will be worth it. This is yet another way in which the prophecy our Lord mentions is fulfilled. They shall all be taught by God. And so as we continue to celebrate the Easter season, let us ask our Lord to bestow upon us a deeper faith in his body and blood, a faith which comes from the will of his Father, so that we might receive his body and blood worthily and devoutly, and by that also give life to the world by the witness of our lives. Let us pray. For all priests, may the Lord give them strength and wisdom for their sacramental ministry. We pray to the Lord. For world leaders, may the Holy Spirit empower them in working for peace. We pray to the Lord. For all who struggle with chronic or debilitating illness, may God bring them consolation, peace, and healing. We pray to the Lord. For this community, may we be given the grace to witness to Christ's presence in the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. For to a Matt Alexander, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. And for all who have passed away, may they come to join the company of all the angels and saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God and Father, hear these prayers we offer you today through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis urgevi et terra, gloria tua, o sana in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, O Sahana in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, 
Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant them share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ died for all that those who live may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for him and is risen. Alleluia.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Uh, after Mass, there is a communion retreat Mass afterward at 9.15, and so if uh, I ask cordially that the rosary group would uh, please say the rosary out in the grotto. Thank you very much, and God bless you for your wonderful service and praise of Our Lady. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended, Alleluia. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Amen. 